Hello everyone, it's Sean and welcome back to the channel. Now, this is a Otterbox QI wireless charger. Admittedly, I don't know much about uh, wireless chargers. I don't ever really use this, use them myself. Uh, but this one comes from a customer. Let's see, is there a model number on this at all? Um, got a serial number. I'm not really seeing the model number. But uh, either way, uh, this QI charger comes from a customer, and uh, supposedly it's the second one that they've owned uh, that has failed on them. However, I believe after watching a couple videos online, these act as uh, a battery bank that are stackable. That's why you have these pins here, so you can up here at the very top. So you can stack one on top of another, so they charge them as a battery bank. And then, of course, it being wireless, you just lay your phone on top if you've got an, essentially an inductive charger, uh, kind of like a transformer, if I can put it that way, where you have a winding in here and then there's a winding on the back of your phone and, you know, like a transformer, you have voltage that comes across, uh, is inducted over those windings. But anyways, uh, this one is not does not work. Actually, there's no power light indication here on the top at all by pressing this button no LEDs come on uh, like I said I don't know much about them other than the fact that uh, this one does not work so I'm gonna plug this in real quick and just with my multimeter here I want to see if any of these pins happen to be a ground or close to a ground again I don't know if uh, this entire this test right here will actually produce for me what I'm hoping to do. I don't know if this will be a factual ground or if there's a short in here somewhere, but uh, we'll go from pin to pin to the outside of our uh, USB cable here. See if anything gives us a low resistance reading. 15K there. 0.3 there, so that might be a ground. 0.3 here, that might be a ground. That was pins two and three. Let's go down one more. Call this pin four. Uh, it's OL, so not connected. And then we're OL on this guy as well. Uh, okay. Uh, we definitely got these three. And I don't know if the buttons need to be pressed down or pressure on it, but. That's at least something. So that gives us a starting point. And so really that's what I'm going to do in this video is just kind of take step by step, see if we can figure out what's going on. So we got our resistance measurements there. Uh, I've got a little USB tester right here, as you can see uh, right up there in the video. That's probably backwards for you, though. We're seeing uh, 5 volts, you know, 5 volt supply. And I plug it in. Do we have, are we drawing any amperage from our main supply and uh, I dropped down to 4.97 volts and 0 0.06 amps so it's bouncing between 0 0.06 and 0 0.08 amps so 60 milliamps 80 milliamps that's not a whole lot of amperage considering the fact that we're supposedly charging this as a battery bank also producing wireless charging and then of course still no LEDs all right so quick test See if the wireless charger works. And uh, no, no inductive charging there. And let me take this off of resistance. We'll put it on DC. We'll make some measurements. Uh, either one of these two pins is potentially that ground. So I've got nothing there, nothing there. Negative 0.5 there, negative 0.5 there. That's interesting. And if I swap these over, does that change anything? No. Interesting. Okay, so got negative 0.5 across both of those. Of course, the difference in potential is not there. So I see 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. Zero.
So suffice to say, just with those measurements, I mean, I would assume that I should be getting, I don't know, what does it say? Input 5 volts, 3 amps. Our output should be 5 volts, 2.4 amps, I suppose, when the battery is fully charged. Input contacts, 12 volts, 5 amps only. While otter, otter spot charging, output contacts. 12 volts, 5 amps. Well, we're not seeing anything like that on physically on the contacts. So, uh, yeah, I'm not seeing anything in regards with this charging as it should. Now, I kind of want to pause and use a, sep a different supply for a second. And I was going to use this, but this isn't going to work. It's only 5 volts, 2 amps. It's old Sam Samsung charger. So we're not going to see anything different. It's essentially what I'm getting at here. 5 volt supply to charge the battery and uh, and no working. Well, the only thing I can do at this point is take it apart and just kind of fill in around the case. It feels like this uh, plastic layer separates between here and here. So this is going to be a pry thing. Hopefully it's not... <coughs> super destructive but uh, I'll be taking them apart and we'll take a look at the inside once I figure that out. device cover now taken off it took a bit of prying and there's this, this elastic in there holding it in uh, turn it upside down insert as you saw through that quick and then you're gonna uh, pry this part upwards and that will pop this part down if that makes sense because you got these retaining tabs all around the side I don't know if you can see them there goes one another the, it's these retaining tabs that you're essentially prying loose. These two, that one. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Uh, little metal standoff posts go here. You just pop out. Standoffs go outside here. All right. So we can see if um, you think. Are we getting five volts in? And we do have test points on here, so that makes things pretty good. So let's plug it in. All right. I'll take my multimeter. And we got test points. See, ground and V bus right here on the edges of our input. Yes, we've got five volts coming in. But, uh, all these other test points that one's showing Let's see if I can get this light kind of out of the way there we go so at the input we definitely have our 5 volts okay like a filter cap or a fuse or something right there not too sure but uh yeah afterwards looks like we're only getting like one volt in certain areas and we got five volts on this side going to this right here okay so that's at least a positive but i'm not seeing five volts on my pins anywhere I was not really doing anything. Okay. 
um, you would think you'd see voltage on one side of those caps on one side of the diode so I'm gonna unplug this let's do a quick diode check I'll put positive on this ground pin right there actually is this a fuse I don't know what that is might be a resistor and a 48k ohm resistor okay Uh, let's go here. All right. And let's just, uh, let's check some of these caps. So I got a diode drop across that one ground on this side. Uh, this whole section right here, those caps are shorted. This diode here shorted straight through on both sides, so that's not a good sign. All right, so just a few caps over here are measuring okay. Yeah, and I got a voltage drop across these caps over here. So I'm going to say that our problem might be within this section here. And this says V reg. So this has to do with voltage regulation. Uh, the way this is situated is potential or something on the other side of the board here. Uh, I want to take my let me get my multimeter out of the way. I want to take my uh, thermal imager, thermal camera, and we're going to try to verify that a little bit. So what I'm going to do is let me turn this on. It takes a second to load up. Okay. And I'm just going to uh, be looking at this section right over here. You can see my finger in that area right now. Now I've removed it in the screen. I'll see if anything heats up. Yeah. Pretty much immediately you see that red spot growing right there. Okay, so that is indicative of a of a short somewhere on here. But can we get it down to a component? Because it's kind of dispersed. It's so all over the entire screen. I know you know I have a harder time seeing what I'm seeing, but that diode is outside of the red zone. These caps are at like the very edge of the red zone. So maybe these two caps right here. Um, these caps that are showing shorted are outside the red zone, but the heat of it, the majority of that heat's kind of right here in the center. Okay. So maybe a potential that there's something on the other side of the board that shorted. Uh, some type of voltage regulation IC or something along those lines. So I think the only thing I can really do moving forward is I'm going to have to take this board out, these four. Uh, what are these? Are they Allen keys? No, they're Torx fits. Uh, I'm going to take this further apart with some Torx fits and we'll have to inspect the other side of this board. Removing the board is a bit tricky because of all this elastic. You gotta be careful how you pry it up, okay? Uh, but now that I do have it pried up, this is the other side of the top of our PCB topology. If you notice we have uh, inductors, and diodes, a lot of caps, and you see this little IC right there let me do like this okay hopefully you see that that's a PMIC that is what is handling all of our charging um, probably step up or fast charging as well and uh, you know from USB-C 
battery, all that kind of stuff. Anyways, uh, so I suspect that's what was burning up, but we can do again a couple diode checks. And uh, let's see. All right, I'm putting right probe on ground. Now my filter is on so that 1k hertz tone might not come through the mic uh, continuously but you should be able to see uh, indications here. So short, that reads like a diode. Yeah, that all looks fine. Let me check up here. Those check fine. Let me check these caps here. So all these caps here appear fine. Let's get close to the ones that are near our PMIC. Yeah, it's safe to say that they are all shorted. So what is the likelihood of, of us having shorted caps here? in here and it being a cap and not the PMIC, I would think pretty low. Uh, so most likely our PMIC is burned out. Let's verify that. We can absolutely verify that. That short is physically there on the PMIC. Turn on my thermal imager and we'll need to uh, focus right here, see what's burning up. And yeah, what well, you can see it getting hot right there. Uh, let me use my lead. And we'll just make sure that that is the PMIC. Oh, it went into cow. There we go. So you can see my lead touching right there at the hottest point. And so that's on this side over here where those caps are at. Uh, another way we can verify it is we can remove the PMIC, okay, from the PCB. Now, I'll be honest with you, nobody in their right mind is going to repair something like this when it breaks, okay? Uh, because you have to remove the battery, you got these caps close by, you got these plastic uh, retainers for our uh, header pins here. So all that stuff, the, these header pins, this battery, all that's going to have to get out of the way just to be able to uh, get some flux and heat on this board here and hopefully not lose anything. So this is definitely, I would not call this repairable by any means. But I don't know, maybe we remove the PMIC and... Um, um, see if the short remains on these caps because that's the best way to determine if it's a PMIC or a cap issue uh, we can at least go from there so I'm gonna figure out a way to get this pin header off the battery kind of moved out of the way and then uh, this elastic off of this PMIC over here a lot of that's going to, have to get chipped away or something and uh, we'll, we'll try to get it removed uh, I'll try to get everything out of the way, not recording that, but when we go to uh, desolder the PMIC, I'll come back and record. Okay, so what I ended up doing, because those uh, plastic pieces are a bit hard to get off on this thing, and I kept bending the board and I was afraid I was going to crack through the layers uh, trying to pry those up. So I went ahead and just masked certain areas with aluminum foil, and then... Uh, Put some of this tape over it as well. Um, I'm using it to kind of make a heat shield or barricade so that way um, I can concentrate my heat here without melting anything in behind it. Now one thing I do want to note, probably really hard for you to see, uh, but right above this cap right here there's another tiny cap. Uh, if you're prying up the battery, 
be aware of that cap. I actually had to, here it goes, reflow it to the border. I know it's not on there perfectly, but I did check it uh, in diode check and it is uh, not shorted through it and connected. So we'll just call that good. As I was scooping away this elastic to move the battery over, it, uh, oh, I don't even have my Ayer camera up. Let's put that there. And we'll actually just move this over so that light's not so bright on you. But anyways, here you go. Yeah, that cap right there. Okay. So I was moving everything up. Uh, had to resolder that back to the board. But uh, anyways, with all that taken care of, I think it's now time to uh, try to remove this uh, IC from the board. So this one right here. See IP uh, 5.3.2.8. So, and if I was to move this side back a bit, uh, some of those pins don't look too good. So I'm wondering if there's like, I don't know, an excessive heat or current or something and that's causing, that might cause these to fail. I'm not too sure, but uh, we at least know that it has failed and it needs to be removed. Take note of this dot here. So that dot lines up with that dot right there. But uh, yeah, let me get some flux down on this and we'll try to desolder it with my hot air gun. So there's our IC for scale purposes. You see the fine tip point on my uh, pliers right here. It will focus. Anyways, there you go. Things incredibly tiny. Uh, fingertip. That's just the tip of my fingernail. Yeah, it's very tiny. Tab bit hard to get it off. I think I actually, the, the aluminum foil and tape worked pretty well, minus that one spot right there. I, but I think I actually did that with my soldering iron, trying to get some low melt solder down on those back uh, pads. But uh, it came off okay. I had to put my uh, hot air station set to 700 and airflow of 50. Um, accidentally popped off that transistor right there, or power regulator. It's either transistor or voltage regulator, but uh, was able to easily put that back on. But uh, everything looks pretty good. Uh, so I guess now it's just going to be uh, checking it with a multimeter. Diode mode. Let's uh, check our capacitors again. Uh, I think enough time has passed that this check should be okay. Yep, 
Ja. And none of those over on that side are shorted anymore. And which ones was it over here? I think these right here were the ones. Not over here. Yeah, we're no longer shorted across both sides on anything. Diode's reading like a diode now. Yeah, I'm going to say... The problem is most definitely this little IC now that I got sitting right here. Uh, so I was able to find some data on this IC and I think you can get it from LCSC but it's the part number doesn't really match up on DigiKey or Mauser. You can however order off of Amazon cheap old boards like this. So we're going to attempt I really do mean this attempt to repair this I'm not sure how successful I'll be so I've ordered up a couple boards and when they get in here we'll swap that uh, PMIC IC off of the new boards and onto this one see if we can't get this to work again uh, but for now uh, it's working as it is we no longer have shorts on all caps so uh, we'll 100% confirm that that was the issue and here are the little PCBs that I mentioned, uh, dual USB modules that you can get off Amazon. Relatively inexpensive. And they're designed for charging a uh, lithium battery, a battery like this. Like uh, this guy over here via USB, USB C. But they have the same PMIC as what's on this guy right here that we removed from that pad. Uh, not all the topology is exactly the same. So basically, it's kind of like the upper side of the board is all here. The bottom side being most likely for this uh, wireless charger. You could probably you know You could probably, um, if you were to reverse engineer this, use one of these and then this half of the board come up with your own wireless charger. You can make something do, but yeah, like I said, we're, I'm going to remove this PMIC and swap it over. We're going to attempt to uh get this thing functional again i don't know what my success rate will be on this that's an incredibly small component but that is at least the game plan so uh let me get set up with my microscope and hot air gun and we'll try to get this all moved over and see if we can make this otterbox wireless charger uh, work again.
all there good enough. Uh, I am slightly concerned that we have good solder at the back end uh, towards the connector. But if we need to adjust, we can adjust after uh, seeing if we get current draw on this thing. So I'm going to plug it in and hopefully nothing shorts out because that would stink. Oh, look at there. We went up to about half an amp of charge. And it came down to 0.4 amps. So that's uh, significantly different than previous. And we have a white light. And we're coming up to about an amp. It looks like our board might be alive again. At a voltage drop from 5 volts, 5.01 to 4.84. And we're coming up on 0.97 amps. Almost an amp of charge. And I got flashing white light over on this side. So I'll tell you what. Let me get this together. And uh, we'll test it out to see if everything's working once I have it all back together. now back together I've left this on a charger for a little bit we've got three uh, fourth LED is still blinking so still charging uh, let's make sure QI or the wireless charging function works and it does not super quick charge but yeah we're charging well, now I want to test it with it unplugged, just to make sure that that battery can still work. Okay, got light there. Yeah, and it's still charging. Other than stacking it, uh, there's nothing much more to test. This seems to be working. And the issue boils down to our PMIC IC that you see right here. That's where our short was at. Now, like I said, I don't think anybody really is going to be repairing these. But for the purpose of this video, it was nice to uh, find the problem. Uh, test to make sure that we identified the actual problem on it and uh, get it repaired so this will now go back to the customer who gave it to me uh, will I do future ones of these and um, probably not I hate 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 soldering on things that are this small I mean I can do it you saw it in a video I can do it um, but but it's not enjoyable but this is absolutely repairable and we have proven that. So hopefully you've gotten something out of this video, at least enjoyed the content. Uh, let me know if you did uh, by giving this video a like. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. If you're looking for a repair, uh, look in the old doobly doo. There's a link to my Google site, uh, the business and repair section, read the entire portion. I should walk you through how to get a hold of me for repairs. Uh, I typically do not answer my cell phone unless I've had previous correspondence with a customer via email. And because unfortunately I get a lot of people calling me looking for me to repair things for free for a video. And I'm just, 
I'm not going to do that. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching. Take care. Goodbye. Mark?